Link 362 cameras are pretty excellent if you know how to use them. I've been using this camera, exactly the Link 2 camera, for a couple of months now and I have tweaked it to perfection. Actually, this footage you are watching right now comes exactly from this camera. And in this video, I'm going to share with you all of the main tips and tricks that I have learned along the way to set it up for maximum video quality. Let me just show you my basic setup here. As you can see, the camera is just here on this C-clamp stand and just above the camera I have the GL1 Pro um, light from Niver. Uh, so this is already a, a great uh, setup here. Uh, and then on the other side I also have another of these lights also on a C clamp. Uh, so this allows me to create a perfect kind of quick setup for recording videos. So this light over here acts as a key light, while this one is a fill light. And then I also have this sun lamp over here just for uh, background. And as you can see over here, it, my curtains are uh, completely drawn so that there is no interference from any other source of uh, light, uh, which always gives me that really consistent uh, look that uh, I'm looking for. Uh, so then when I apply my color grading uh, in the post-production, uh, it's going to be almost instantaneous and I don't have to tweak it anymore. The other thing that is really making a huge difference is the uh, Stream Deck that I'm using here. And in the Stream Deck, I have a button called Lights. And over here, I can just, uh, just switch it on. Okay, so as you can see here in uh, these settings, I can already set everything up for my lights, including the color temperature, the brightness, and so on and so forth. And then it's really cool when I uh, go to my mm, Stream Deck over here, because then I can, with a press of a button, just switch these settings. So for example, here I have a 5.5K in terms of color temperature. So it's consistent on the left and right, but they have different brightnesses, let's say. Uh, and I can just switch them on and off uh, just here, uh, which is extremely convenient. But then when I'm recording with my uh, Canon M50 here, uh, I also have um, extra settings for these lights just for that M50. Uh, so then I always have a perfect kind of setup. Uh, so I think uh, this is uh, a, really a way to go and uh, it's extremely easy to set up. When I just try to record something, I can just go in here, lights, turn them on, set them for the webcam recording and I'm ready to go. And the color temperature here is also really important because we are going to be setting this up in a moment in the, um, the app for the Link 360 uh, camera as well. So it's going to be fully consistent. Uh, I'm actually recording using um, OBS. So I also have OBS uh, buttons here for uh, just uh, turning it on or off and the recording. But then the really cool thing is that if I just go uh, to the next screen, uh, I have different scenes also for my, um, for the feed from the Link360 camera. Uh, so I can switch between uh, different scenes really easily. Uh, for example, um, I have this kind of full frame uh, set up. Oh, for example, right now I just clicked on uh, full frame over here. And then there is screen share and me. Uh, so then when I just click on it, I instantly um, change to the screen share uh, plus um, my frame in this little rectangle uh, here. And uh, I'm doing the same thing. I can do the same thing for recording vertical video. So for example, if you want to record video for um, social 
media. I'm not going to uh, actually switch it here right now because it's going to mess up the recording. Uh, but if I just clicked on, for example, here I'm, I have mm, 16 by 9, but here I have 9 by 16. So then I can just very quickly switch to 9 by 16 and then have full vertical video. And I also have a scene where there is like this little a frame of me plus the screen share, but also on vertical. So I think this is uh, an extremely helpful uh, tip right here. And now we are already in the Insta360 Link Controller app. So I'm going to show you all of the top mm, settings that you can apply to achieve uh, the best results with your recordings. So first of all, uh, I would not really record uh, using the uh, Link360 app. Uh, we are going to be recording via OBS because it has many more options. And we are going to explore some of these options uh, here in a moment. Uh, the really cool thing is that um, you can take screenshots uh, for, from this camera. Uh, so if you have set up proper uh, lights and everything, uh, this is really great for taking, for example, images for uh, YouTube thumbnails. And then you can set it to automatically save these screenshots to your um, designated folder. So this is uh, extremely helpful. Uh, then I'm not really using any of these auto-framing, whiteboard, smart, smart whiteboard or desk view options uh, because uh, they are just kind of not really helpful for general recording. Then when it comes to recording, of course, we are going for 4K and uh, 30 uh, frames per second. This is going to uh, give you the best um, results, especially for YouTube or if you are recording for social media. It's going to be a little bit faster, a little bit more uh, dynamic. And over here, these are like the top options. We have the smart composition. Uh, this is actually cool if you want to uh, participate in some online calls. But uh, for here, we are just going to uh, focus on recording. As you can see, I have a little bit of zoom here. Uh, because of um, the framing here, uh, I have my huge monitor. Uh, just here, <clears throat> so I don't want the monitor to uh, get into the frame. But the real magic uh, happens in uh, these settings over here. Uh, and let us let me just walk you through uh, my full setup after a lot of experimentation. Uh, first of all, exposure. Uh, let's set it to manual. Uh, with uh, auto exposure, your image is going to be really grainy. Uh, ISO, I set it to 100. Uh, just to uh, allow the sensor to pick up only the most of the light from uh, my lightning setup. I don't want any graininess or to add any digital noise to my image. So that's why ESO is just set to 100, but 2 or 300 uh, I think is also pretty cool. Then shutter speed um, would be uh, 1 uh, 50th of a second. Uh, normally, uh, of course, you would set it up to 60 because we have 30 frame, frames per second, so the shutter would be uh, 1 60th of a second. However, I live in Poland where we have, mm, where the lights and the electricity rolls at a 50 hertz per uh, second rate, uh, so to avoid flickering, I'm using 150. Uh, then uh, I wouldn't really mess with the exposure curve. Uh, autofocus, actually I'm using the autofocus here. Uh, I found that it's working extremely well. Um, and I don't really want to mess with it. I, was, um, I saw some YouTubers talking about just setting the manual focus, but um, this really didn't work. Even if you move a little bit uh, with the manual focus, uh, your image, your face is not going to be in full focus, but with autofocus it's catching uh, my face uh, perfectly every time. Then temperature. Temperature, you would also set it to manual. Uh, we have 5,500 Kelvin. So this is like the daylight temperature of uh, color. And it's exactly what I have set on my uh, lamps over here. So it's exactly synced. Uh, you can set it to auto, uh, for example, if 
you are using um, just your window or something because then the temperature is going to be changing uh, all the time. And then we have um, some other settings over here, uh, which is brightness. Uh, I would advise you to set it to 25%. Um, otherwise, it's getting too bright. Uh, contrast 35, saturation 35, sharpness um, 25. So then the uh, image is a little bit more, uh, let's say, mild. It's not so sharp. Uh, so it doesn't really look like a webcam if it's going to be at 25%. Uh, but then why the saturation and contrast at 35? This is because we are going to be uh, doing some um, improvements in the post-production. So we don't want to add uh, more contrast or saturation artificially right now during the raw recording, uh, because then it's going to mess up our possibility to really fine-tune it later in the uh, post-production. Then uh, we have the anti-flicker here set to 50 Hertz. Uh, you can also, uh, you have it for 60 Hertz or auto. Uh, and there is the HDR, uh, but actually I have experimented with the HDR option here. It's not really working properly, so I just leave it off. Uh, and then we have these um, extra options here. Uh, one of the top options is the bokeh effect. So it's the, the background is kind of a little bit blurry, um, uh, but you cannot just <laughs> overdo it because otherwise uh, you are, again, it's going to be looking artificial uh, because this is like purely digital uh, effect. So 15% I found is uh, the sweet spot. Otherwise it's uh, looking mm, too artificial. And then of course you can add some backgrounds or a makeup filter, but we are not going to do anything like this because again, uh, we will uh, just uh, fix uh, our um, image or the, the raw footage in post-production. So that's it. Uh, you can uh, add uh, makeup and stuff, but that's only available in uh, 1080p. And the 1080p is also uh, like pretty fine, but we are going for the maximum uh, quality here. And then finally, we have more options over here. You have these gestures. So you can raise your hand for auto framing, but then it's going to create a lot of digital zoom, uh, which is going to um, decrease the quality of your image. Then whiteboard, if you're working with a whiteboard and zoom uh, again, it's going to just zoom in and mess up your image. Uh, for audio mode, actually the, um, the microphone here is pretty good. Uh, the thing is that, um, you can use uh, voice focus. This is basically the one that is has been working for me, but I'm not really recording the audio with the from the camera itself. Rather, I'm using this uh, Rode PodMic um, USB, which is pretty amazing. Uh, so again, if you want to uh, just support the channel, <laughs> if you haven't bought this camera, the Link360 camera. You can uh, grab it in the description or the, the microphone. I have my full setup uh, just listed out in the description. Uh, you can also like and subscribe to this channel. Uh, and now let's move to uh, the next section of this video, which is going to be about um, setting up the um, OBS. All right, so now we are in OBS uh, and um, there are a couple of important things here. First of all, of course, you can set the scenes. So for example, here we have the, the screen share plus uh, I'm here in uh, this uh, little miniature. I can make it bigger or smaller, whatever. I can also just set it to a full frame me. So then we have like this full frame image. Uh, but then when you set it up, this is extremely important that in properties, uh, you set it to Insta360 virtual camera, because you also have this ability to set it to Insta360 link to C. Uh, but this is not the correct setting, because then you are just going to get the raw feed from the camera, but without all of these special effects that we have just set up 
like the brightness, the sharpness, the saturation, and everything else. So make sure that in all of your scenes uh, on, um, uh, on OBS, you have set it uh, to uh, just Insta link, uh, sorry, to uh, Insta360 virtual camera. This is the correct setting. Uh, and now we can also take a look at uh, perhaps some of the preferences here. So of course, uh, you would go to recording uh, and over here, uh, you can see my settings. Uh, I'm recording it as an MP4, uh, then Apple VT H264 hardware encoder uh, and so on and so forth. So I experimented with uh, different uh, settings. Uh, these seem to be working the best for me. And of course, here in the video, you would set it again to 4K and uh, 30 FPS. So there is full sync uh, between uh, the, uh, the camera and how you are going to be recording in, in OBS. And finally, uh, we can take a look at um, the setup for Final Cut Pro and the color grading. I am actually using Final Cut Pro because I'm on a Mac. It's really fast. I love it. But you can do it in any other video editing tool. So we are just going to grab this test footage over here. And I especially set the saturation to be a little bit lower. Uh, because um, now we are going to kind of fix it uh, over here. Uh, and the way to do it is that you uh, use the vector scope over here. Uh, sorry, the waveform first, and you set it to Luma. Uh, so you can see kind of the uh, dynamic range for the shadows and the highlights. Uh, and then uh, you would just push uh, these um, color wheels into the right direction, set the correct color temperature uh, and uh, increase the saturation a little bit. Uh, so then you uh, end up with a, a proper a kind of beautiful uh, image that you can export. So let me just uh, show you uh, what's going on here. I have already set uh, a, a preset here so you can just tinker with all of these uh, settings over here and over here. Um, and as well, you can use the, um, the vector scope uh, for your face uh, to make sure that everything is looking natural. And then once you have the perfect result, you would just apply that kind of color grading uh, preset to your footage. Uh, and uh, this should already uh, improve it dramatically uh, so that you have the best uh, result possible. It's uh, a, a huge difference, actually. You can see that without the, the these color grading settings, it's a little bit uh, flat. It's not saturated. Um, but with these uh, settings, it's much more vibrant, colorful, and beautiful. So then you would just export it uh, and uh, you end up with a really high quality, uh, beautiful video from your uh, 4K camera. The main thing that we have learned today is that it's great to have uh, consistent lights and a setup that allows you to start recording your video in just a couple of seconds. Uh, because uh, this is actually making a huge difference. You can just come in here. For example, I just set on OBS. I set up my lights. My mic is already connected here. And in a couple of seconds, I can already start uh, recording. Uh, so I hope that you have found this video extremely helpful and that you will get the best image possible from your Insta Link 2 uh, or 2C a camera. Uh, and if you are interested in uh, these kinds of topics, then perhaps you might want to watch this video next, where I break down 
the full setup I have here for this type of seamless video recording, especially for education, digital marketing, and so on and so forth. So thanks for watching, and I'm going to see you in the next one.